What's up guys, it's Carney. Fellas, how you doing? Ladies, I was almost afraid you wouldn't make it. All right, today's gonna be a little bit different than what we're normally talking about here. I'm actually, I'm not gonna make any music today. This is just a very kind of small thing that I noticed recently that I thought if other music producers knew about it, then it might help them. So today we're gonna talk about why if you're a music producer, you should probably switch to Apple Music. You can call me a loser. You can call me a an asshole, you can call me pretentious, you can bring up the U2 album for all I care, but I believe if you are making music, you owe it to yourself to at least try using Apple Music. There are two primary reasons for this. One of them's kind of a general thing, and the other one is a very specific new feature that came out, which is kind of what spurred me to want to make this video. My hair will not behave today. Sorry. So let's start with the general stuff. Obviously there's a bunch of different streaming services. There's there's even like YouTube music, there's Spotify, there's Apple Music, there's Deezer, like I get all that. Objectively, Apple Music sounds better. Remember when Tidal came out and their whole thing was like, oh, we have lossless audio that you can stream and blah, 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 blah. It was like streamable CD quality audio. That was Tidal's whole claim to fame. Didn't work out for them, but now, Apple Music has that feature. It's all lossless and sometimes they even have like Dolby Atmos stuff, it's crazy. So if you're learning how to produce or if you're learning how to mix or master or something like that, you wanna have the full gamut of, I'm, I'm gonna use a different word than gamut, the full range of audio possibilities that you can learn from so you can get better at those skills. Allow me to give an example. Spotify compresses the hell out of every track on Spotify. So it flattens out the dynamics of some good mixes you might hear, but also it tricks you into thinking that some mixes that aren't as good are better. My example of this, as much as it pains me to say because I love this song, is Stacy's mom. If you listen to Stacy's mom on Apple Music, you actually hear like the real mix and master that they put out and it does not sound good. I hope it's some kind of fluke and it's just like my phone or something, I don't know, but it it really sounds bad to me. It's just not glued together at all, like I said, just not a good mix. The song's still great, it's still produced really well, but it's just the mix is not good. But as sad as that makes me as a fan of that song, as a producer, that's actually very helpful to me because if I can hear good songs that have maybe less than perfect mixes, that's an easier way for me to get my head around what good and bad mixing actually is. But if I'm just listening on Spotify, everything is leveled out to to the same level and I can't really analyze things in the same way. And when you're learning to produce music, I, at least for me, I always wanted to make sure that I could try to hear every element of each song so I could learn from them. The two previous videos I did, like the here's a tip thing where I'm just finding like little tiny things that can, uh, you know, maybe put a production over the edge. A lot of the ideas I have for those production tricks and those videos are just because I listened to a lot of good music and I just heard like, oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that, you know. The goal when learning how to produce music is eventually to be able to kind of hear music the same way that like Neo sees the matrix at the end of the matrix when he can like see all the green text and stuff and like he understands that it's a simulation and like it proves that he's the one. That's where we're trying to get. But sonically. And it's gonna be a lot easier for you to do that if you have a higher quality uh, recording so you can actually just sort of pick out each thing because they're just, it's fuller sounding mixes, it's better sounding, and aforementioned sometimes it's not as good sounding, but that's also good for you to analyze because it'll help you to get better. Okay, number two. This is the new feature that came in that kind of is piggybacking off the same point that I was just making. There's this new feature called Apple Music Sing. The purpose of this feature is to let people use Apple Music to do karaoke for basically any song that they could ever want. There's stuff like this everywhere nowadays where it's like you can literally just go, like there's like browser versions of it where you can just upload the file of a song and it will rip out like the acapella from the song and separate it from the instrumental. Apple Music is just doing that, but you can choose the level that you want the original vocal to be at. So that can either be like pretty much completely gone or it can be all the way up just like a normal streaming song that you would listen to. So yes, it's very obviously meant just for karaoke. But as a producer, this makes what I was just talking about a lot easier. I cannot tell you how many times I have been trying to figure out what that one cool thing in this beat or in this, you know, song, even from like the 70s or something like that is. But the lead vocal is so loud that I just kind I really can't figure it out. Having this 
is amazing because I can basically just listen to the instrumentals of any music that I want to listen to now. It's way easier for me to start learning to do that Matrix thing where I'm like, okay, cool, well, I hear how this tambourine has this delay on it, and I hear how this piano has this type of reverb on it. It doesn't sound the same as this other reverb in the song, and but, you know, all that stuff. And if you're trying to get better, you want to be listening to as much well-produced music as possible because that is what is going to be the best indicator for you to know that you are producing good music as well. You always want to be a student of the game. This, I think, is a very, very, very powerful asset that I will be using for me, and I've been doing this for a while now, and I think that you guys should look into using it too. So yeah, that's, uh, that's why I think you should... Uh, switch to Apple Music. I have outed myself as an Apple Music user. We are small, but we're mighty. Anyway, I hope everything's going good for you guys. It's February now. It's still, it's a whole new year still. Get out there. What are you, what are you doing here? Get out there. Go ask for a raise. Go ask her out. Grab some headphones and go to Denny's at like 11.30 p.m. alone and eat some breakfast food. You deserve that. What are you, what are you still doing here? Go buy like an ice acai bowl or something. I don't know, you gotta make some changes. I believe in you. I know I've, I've said it before, I'm gonna say it again. If no one else believes in you, no, I believe in you. You can do this, get on out there. Okay, ladies, now let's get in formation. All right, so that's the end of this video. I'll be back at some point. I really promised myself at the beginning of this year it was gonna be uh, once a week uploads. Already kind of messed that up. But January was kind of a busy month for me. I think I'm going to have some more time this month. So hopefully I'll have some more content up here soon. Have a great rest of your day. Keep making whatever music you're making. Unless it's bad, then you probably should make some different music. Fellas, you have a great rest of your day. And uh, say something nice to the ladies on the way out.